Your Excellency, Mr. Prime Minister, Honourable Ministers, WHO Director General and Regional Director, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, good morning. And thank you, Susanna, once again for inviting me to take part in the Regional Committee for Europe, this being its 67th session, hosted by the Hungarian government in the beautiful city of Budapest. This is the seventh regional committee that I have attended as patron of the World Health Organization Regional Office for Europe. And I always look forward to the, this occasion where leaders and champions join together to shape Europe's future agenda for the health and well-being of the people of the European region. I would like to take this opportunity in front of this distinguished audience to congratulate the new WHO Do Director General, Dr. Tedros, and express how pleased I am to see that the priorities that you have already communicated are fully aligned with those of the European region. As the new era of work in the pursuit of the Sustainable Development Goals has commenced, it is extremely timely that we are called to discuss and support the new roadmap that implements the 2030 Agenda for Sustainable Development. Building, of course, on Health 2020. The roadmap highlights the region's priorities and gives us a common direction. To achieve the Sustainable Development Goals, we need to ensure better, more equitable, sustainable health and well-being for all at all ages. This is universal health coverage. When the opportunity presents itself, I communicate and promote this concept through issues that I believe require particular focus and attention. Maternal and, maternal and child health, immunization, and combating antimicrobial resistance. The health, dignity, and rights of women, children, and adolescents are at the cornerstone of our societies. It is through maternal and child mortality that we measure health status of a country. It is an essential indicator for observing progress, and it establishes clearly that unless we address gender gaps and violence, unless we ensure access to sexual and reproductive health and rights, unless we stop targeting children and adolescents with adult tailored interventions and start designing infant interventions that meet their needs, then we will not achieve, and achieve the health and development targets outlined in the Sustainable Development Goals. We cannot forget the importance of investing in children and adolescents, they are our future. Their ability and possibility to fulfill their full potential will be a testament to the actions we take today. If we fail them, their chance of success is questionable. But if we succeed for them, they will most definitely succeed. From the earliest stages in life, children need protection. Few of our interventions have had a greater impact on health than vaccines. Vaccine programs are the foundation of strong health systems and serve to strengthen societies and address inequities. Vaccines are the safest and most cost-effective tools, effective tools for preventing infectious diseases. Vaccines also positively impact our health and well-being, our education, our employment, and our national economies. Therefore, it is a good sign that over two-thirds of this region countries have interrupted the endemic transmission of measles and rubella. However, vaccine supply and demand challenges in many countries have resulted in a failure to achieve the desired coverage levels in Europe. This failure has led to vaccine-preventable disease resurgence, hospitalizations and deaths, and outbreak-associated economic costs. One in 10 children in the European region remains under-vaccinated. And disturbingly, measles continue to spread, and this has led to the tragic loss of life in the heart of Europe. It's extremely sad 
that 41 people have died from measles in the past year. This is 41 deaths from a disease that can be avoided with just two shots of an available vaccine. This illustrates all too clearly that whilst we see steady progress towards regional and global eradication and elimination and con control goals, more needs to be done and we must remain vigilant. We must ensure that the next generation is afforded the opportunity to achieve their full potential with the out, without the threat of illness or death due to vaccine-preventable diseases. In November 2016, I had the privilege of visiting the Republic of Moldova, together with the regional director. Our visit focused on the importance of maintaining the momentum of immunization programs. This visit contributed to increased efforts to eliminate measles and rubella and accelerate the introduction of the human papilloma vaccine in the country. Our visit also focused on maternal and child health and the importance of tackling AMR. I'm convinced that AMR is one of the major threats of our time to the health of humans and animals, and therefore my support on this issue will continue in the coming period. Despite the political commitment, it is evident that many people in many countries still fail to understand the consequences of the way they use or misuse antibiotics. Unfortunately, this is also the case in Europe. AMR affects us all. Therefore, it's essential that this threat is communicated simply and widely so that everyone has the necessary level of understanding and can act accordingly. We have the knowledge and know-how, therefore there is no excuse for not acting. Last year, I supported the World Antibiotic Awareness Week with a statement recognizing the work and the role of healthcare workers. The doctors, nurses, pharmacists, and hospital prescribers who depend on political support as frontline protectors of the effectiveness of vaccines, of antibiotics. This year's Awareness Week will build on previous campaigns and highlight the importance of infection prevention and control measures to decrease AMR. I invite you all to join forces and come together during this week in November. Europe has been leading this fight during the past years. Now it's time to show the world we can make a difference and reduce AMR. And it will take a strong WHO to do that in Europe and globally. A WHO that listens to you, the member states, and responds to your needs and paves the way in public health. An illustrative example of this is the capacity building of WHO in prevention, preparedness, and response to health emergencies. In the words of our DG, Dr. Tedros, universal health coverage and health emergencies are cousins, two sides of the same coin. Here we see a WHO consistent with its objectives and committed to the role as the leading global health authority. As patron of the WHO European Office um, for Europe, I am encouraged by these transform transformative actions and to, proud to be contributing where I can to this work. Over the next few days, there is much to be discussed vaccines and migration, AMR and tuberculosis, as well as the 10 years of the international health regulations, the platform to improve health security. You will be called on to make decisions on a sustainable health workforce, access to medicines, the environment, and health. You will be setting the stage for strong health systems that are critical for the implementation and ultimately the achievement of the Sustainable Development Goals. I wish you a productive week ahead and lastly I would like to thank you for the personal investment that each and every one of you are making towards the health and well-being of each and every citizen of the European region. Thank you.